Believe it or not, I have actually never made a dedicated video to a gimbal or to gimbals in general, which I find very strange because I've used a lot of gimbals in my day and I find myself using them, say about 50, maybe 40% of the time throughout a lot of my projects, commercial campaigns, all of that stuff. I would say since I bought the RS2 about two years ago, that has been the best gimbal I've ever used. Now DJI have brought out this RS3 mini, it intrigued me. DJI, of course, have been improving the technology in these gimbals, you know, making them smoother, lighter, easier to transport, all stuff like that. I am not the biggest gimbal enthusiast. Like I only use one if I really, really need to. And like I said, since buying the RS2, the thing that won me over about that is the setup time. Purely setup time and actually compatibility, so how light it is, I was able to transport it around. It wasn't a hassle, it wasn't heavy. The setup time is a massive thing for me. Like I said, I'm not the biggest gimbal enthusiast, but having a gimbal that can be set up really, really easy, very quickly, made me really like them. So that's where the RS2 sort of won me over. So the things that stand out for me and why I like this gimbal so much is the fact that it's small and light. Those are the two big factors for me because you guys know me by now, I'm always traveling, I'm on the go. This is perfect for someone who's doing a lot of traveling, who doesn't have like a lot of space in their bag, who wants to take a gimbal. It's not gonna take up too much room. It's not gonna be too heavy. This is super, super light. Obviously got all the mechanisms made out of some sort of like aluminium, I believe. This is definitely not gonna weigh down your bag. So that is an A star for me in that department, having something small and light and easy to transport. Of course, another feature that DJI have added onto all of their latest gimbals is the locking mechanism. So you can lock all of the arms in place when you're carrying it around. So all of the components aren't like flopping about. So you can securely have all of these locked in place. And then once you've obviously balanced the gimbal, it can just stay like that. So you don't have to rebalance it every time. Something that DJI have done, which I'm a massive, massive fan of, is that they've made it way easier to switch from horizontal to vertical video. Now on the RS2 and the RS3, I actually have to use a small rig cage on my camera if I want to mount the camera uh, vertically for like TikToks, Reels content, stuff like that. Whereas with this, all you need to do is just take this mechanism off where the camera sits, you slide this off like so, and then you slide it onto the top part like that. And that's it, it's pretty much done. It was very, very easy and efficient to, to switch. And then obviously all you have to do is rebalance it. That is another A star for DJI in my book, um, being able to do that so quickly and efficiently. Another thing that you'll notice about this gimbal is that it has one single USB-C port, which is where you charge the entire gimbal. Whereas on the RS2, the RS3, the bigger ones, you could actually take the handle off and it looks something like this. And this handle would just be the separate part that you would charge from the rest of the gimbal. If anything, it would probably make this a lot easier to transport around if it could do that. But then again, it's so small, I don't really think you'd notice. The battery life with these gimbals are usually pretty good. Like the RS2 has lasted me at least two days of continuous shooting and it's probably ran out like 40 to 50%. So the battery life on both of the gimbals and this, when I used it the other day, is really, really good. Like I think I used about 60%. And one other thing, it has Bluetooth. So you can actually connect the gimbal to your camera and then you can actually record with your camera by pressing the record button on the gimbal, which helped me out a lot when I was shooting rollers the other night. I could just press the, the button, which is basically next to my thumb and record rather than search for the record button on my camera and try and find it and whatever. Yeah, that made it a lot more convenient for, for shooting, definitely. Hello everyone, I'm now outside. As you can see, I've got the gimbal and I've got my camera here and I'm gonna do a really quick timed real world test to see how fast I can balance this gimbal with the a7r4 and the 14 to 24 mil on the only reason why i wanted to use this lens and not the 24 to 70 is because this is the lens i usually vlog with and i feel like if i was to use this gimbal for anything it would be vlogging but we're going to do a timed real world test see how fast i can balance this gimbal Something that you may have to keep in mind as well is it requires smartphone activation for you to use it. So say for instance, you buy it and you just take it out first time you use it and your phone dies, you won't be able to use it until you've got either a phone battery or you activate it via your smartphone. That's it, how long is that? Three minutes, 10 seconds, which isn't too bad to be honest. I'd probably say that's double the amount of time it would take me to set up the RS3, but 
three minutes is not bad at all. Okay, so right now I'm currently testing out the stabilization on the RS3 Mini. Currently have my camera mounted to it. I'm just walking how I would normally. I've got it in pan follow mode and just testing the stabilization to see if it's any good. So far, it's not too bad. The only thing I haven't done though is I haven't mounted my microphone to the top of my camera because I have the Video Mic Pro and it's quite big and bulky. I'm going to give it lots and lots of points for size, weight, stuff like that, which I'll go into in a minute. I will say, and I'm going to be honest straight off the bat, I don't know if it's because I'm just not very good at balancing gimbals, but it took me a while to set up this with the 24 to 70 and I was there for at least... I'd say 15 minutes. And then when I did set it up, it just kept like the whole thing kept rotating off to the side and not going the direction that I wanted it to. So I just ended up scrapping it and using a smaller lens like a 35 or a 25. And that was a lot easier and quicker to set up. So that's one sort of drawback I had from it. I don't know if anyone else has had this problem or if it's just me. And then the second issue that I had is this mechanism here at the top. It's just not very smooth. Like each of these components are really smooth when I want to balance it. But this, like, why is it? It, I just, I don't know why. All right, so my final verdict on the RS3 Mini. Is this something that I feel like you should invest in? Now, if you're someone who does not already own a gimbal and you are looking for something that's not really going to break the bank too much, this is a great little option. The build quality is amazing. It's small, it's light, it's compact. It's not going to get in your way too much and it will probably with ease hold a lot of Sony mirrorless cameras with, you know, 35 mils, 50 mils, whatever it is. Crop sensored cameras, this will have a great time balancing it and I don't think you're going to have any issues but for someone like me I don't know what I would use this for because I already have an RS3 and an RS2 I don't know what use I would get out of something like this because I'm just used to using the bigger gimbals I feel like they're just maybe a bit more reliable especially if I'm using bigger setups I can see why for someone who doesn't own a gimbal this would be a great great little option and like I said 300 pounds it's not going to ridiculously break the bank and yeah, it's a good little option for, for traveling and for smaller setups. I really much enjoyed using it, especially from that test footage that you saw at the beginning when I was getting shots of uh, Tommy going through the tunnels. That held up really, really well. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It helps out a lot more than you think. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section as well about the RS3 Mini, whether this is a gimbal for you or it's not for you, you've considered buying it. Let me know your thoughts down below and yeah, I shall see you guys very, very soon in the next one. Peace.